Section 2 of Crazy Step 1, Throw Away the Scales Part C The Weighing Scales Out of sight, out of mind To break the habit of constantly weighing yourself, one of the steps you can take to make it easier is to restrict access to weighing scales inside and outside of your home. Scales within your home these are the ones that will hold the greatest power over you as they are the easiest to use and accessible 24-7. If you are brave enough, dispose of your scales altogether. Please note that when I say dispose, I do not mean throw away. I am referring to the greener alternative i.e. Donate, sell or recycle. If doing this is a little too much too soon, then here are some suggestions to reduce the ease of access. 1. If your scales are currently on your bathroom floor, you could place them in a cupboard upstairs. This would mean that you would have to make the additional effort of having to fetch them every time before being able to use them. 2. If you have scales in your bedroom, for example by your bed, you could put them in a unit or sideboard in another room which is preferably on another floor. 3. If your scales are on your kitchen floor, place them in a unit above so at least you have to bring them out each time. 4. If you are up to the challenge, place your scales outside of your home, say in your car boot, a shed or other outbuilding to make them even less accessible. Choose one of the above options for each weighing scale that you have to maximize the effort that will be required for you to weigh yourself. Use the template provided to record the new location and then monitor and tick each time you visit the old location and do not weigh yourself. Scales outside your home. This is trickier to deal with as you cannot remove them from public places or at friends or family homes. Here are some suggestions to help you. 1. If your morning routine involves buying a tea, coffee, soft drink etc. from a local store that has a weighing scale, you should consider going to another store. 2. If you always weigh yourself at a friend's house because they keep a set of scales on their kitchen floor or other room, explain to your friend what it is you are trying to achieve and ask if it is at all possible that they move the scales elsewhere. Another alternative with this situation is that you simply avoid the room. Three. If you weigh yourself at a family member's house, then, just like with your friends consider the options above. How to stop weighing yourself altogether. This is the final part of crazy step 1, throw away the scales. Refer to the grids that you have completed as these will tell you the number of times you normally weigh yourself. The point of this exercise is to gradually reduce the need to weigh yourself and keep yourself in check. To start off with, I would recommend the following useful guide. If you weigh yourself once a day, weigh yourself every other day. If you weigh yourself in the morning and evening, cut out one of those. If you weigh yourself three or four times a day, begin by cutting out one of those per day or every other day. Tip, have your money tin or jar to hand and drop in a coin each time you successfully not weigh yourself. What to expect? Negative vibrations. One, resistance from others. People find it uncomfortable when you try something that goes against the grain. Accept that this is a normal reaction, in fact, prepare for it so that it doesn't catch you by surprise and act as a setback. 2. Resistance from yourself. Sounds crazy but it is true. For most of us dieters, the urge to weigh yourself is as strong as an addiction. Remember that you may fiercely resist, 
resisting the scales and this too is perfectly normal. Just persevere. 3. Feelings of panic are part of the process too. Your mind will conjure up all sorts of reasons for you to weigh yourself and at these times, rely on your affirmations. They are extremely powerful and will help you. Positive Vibrations 1. You will feel freer and more relaxed on a day-to-day -day basis when you have unchained yourself from the constant need to weigh yourself. Freedom not only from the dread surrounding the reading on the scales but also from the compulsion of having to weigh yourself at any particular time or place. 2. The good or bad moods that were falsely created when you weighed yourself will no longer exist. Whether you are feeling happy or sad will therefore no longer be attached to whether you have weighed yourself or not. 3. You will be free from feeling bad about gaining or not losing any weight. 4. You will stop labeling and judging yourself by the reading on the weighing scales. Encountering setbacks. Life is not plain sailing and neither is the process of change. Even with the knowledge that you are following the plan with a positive end, you will have times when you are placed in a situation of pressure to return to your old ways. To counteract these times, remind yourself of why you started this journey and here are some great ideas which have been proven to motivate and help. Affirmations. You may not know this but you are already using affirmations every day. Affirmations are words spoken to ourselves and what we tell ourselves matters. The only thing is that we are so used to using negative affirmations like I am fat, I am ugly, I am not worth it, nobody finds me attractive that we end up creating a life that we are not happy with. This demonstrates that affirmations work and therefore simply by changing our language we can achieve different results. For example, we can change a negative statement into a positive one. Negative, I am ugly. Positive, I am beautiful. Negative, I am fat. Positive, I am strong. Negative, I am not worth it. Positive, I am worth it. Complete this grid by downloading it from the templates provided. It will help you to change the narrative in your head. Here are some examples to help you with this process that will make it easier to recognize your value that you may not be able to see for yourself. Acknowledging all that you already are will help increase your self-worth. I look after my elderly mother. I am a kind person. I help others. The color blue suits me. I have lovely thick hair. My eyes are a beautiful color. I have a great job. Have them to hand. Save them as a background on your phone. Download an affirmation app. Write them on a chalkboard, paper note, card, picture frame and place them anywhere around the house. Place them in your handbag. Have them at your desk or workstation. Say them out loud. Record and replay them on any device. Have them as screensavers. Survival tips. Don't put yourself under so much pressure that it counteracts what the anti-diet lifestyle actually stands for. This means allowing yourself to fail without giving up. It's knowing that it is completely okay to slip up and to pick yourself up again when you're ready and simply carry on from where you left. Over time, the steps have been designed to slowly change your subconscious mind. Know that changing the habits of a lifetime will be difficult. Once you accept this, you will feel more relaxed and this state of being will further help you make the transition. However, on bad days, we all need a little extra help and here are some of the things you can do to help yourself. Try them all to begin with and persist with those that help. 
With regular practice, they will become a habit and will help you to make good decisions a second nature. One, be prepared. This is the most powerful tip of all. Be prepared for resistance from yourself. Know that you may find it hard, but be prepared to push through. A. Give in to yourself. If you are feeling stressed out by the process, let it go for a while, but not altogether. B. Write down all of your reasons for beginning the journey in the first place. C. Write down how you felt when on a conventional diet. D. If this is the second or third time you are feeling low, revisit some of what you wrote in your journal the last time. E. Treat yourself. Have a spa day, spend time with friends, be creative. A change really is as good as a rest and will replenish vital energy to get you restarted again. Tip. Keep your journal safe, it is meant as a tool to help only you. Be totally open and frank with yourself in your journal. If you find you are still kidding yourself, then the process is less likely to help. 2. Fill your box. To illustrate why you will experience a strong resistance to change the weighing habit, the grids below demonstrate two examples, one with weighing and one without. As you can clearly see, the second grid has a gaping hole where weighing yourself used to be. This can literally trigger a negative reaction compelling us to fill the gap with the same behavior, because, it's the only way we know how to deal with it. This is our default even if it is bad for us. This means that as you stop weighing yourself, it will feel as if you are craving something that is lost tempting you to return to your old ways, your comfort zone. The Life Grid Exercise The example already given is a representation of a typical life. To reach your own understanding of how this change is likely to affect you personally, you need to complete your own life grid by filling in the boxes that apply to you and your life. Simply download the template provided and begin. Grid 1. Your Life Now Grid 2. Your life without weighing yourself. Now write down your feelings as you compare the two grids. For example, is the gap making you feel discomfort, depressed, out of control, stressed etc? Forming a new habit, filling the gap. It is vital that we replace the old habit with a new self-affirming one that will lead to positive outcomes. The good news is that there are many positive things you can do to fill the gap left behind. Therefore, you should view this as an exciting opportunity to reflect on what you would like to do with that spare time and energy. It could be that you've always wanted to pursue a new hobby or make extra, meet time or do more things with your family etc. Write down no less than 20 things that you have always wanted to do but have never had the time. Be as specific and detailed as you can so that they turn into achievable goals and not just a dream. For example, Dream, I want to learn to play the guitar. Goal, I will sign up for weekly acoustic guitar lessons from first of the next month. Three. Daily distractions. As you progress through crazy step number one, throw away the scales. You will no doubt be faced with challenges that will tempt you to return to your weighing habit. Arm yourself with distractions to overcome these moments and here are some examples. Read, ebook, paperbacks, audiobooks etc. Garden. Pursue a hobby. 
Go see a friend. Call a friend. Call a family member. Go see a family member. Watch a movie. Take a walk. Clear out a messy wardrobe. Clear out an untidy makeup drawer. Rearrange your jewelry. Practice does not make perfect. Only perfect practice makes perfect. Vince Lombardi. Learning outcomes. After successfully completing this course, you will remove the need to weigh yourself. Stop judging yourself according to your weight. Have more time to use productively. Have less focus on dieting itself. Have reduced your obsession of the need to control your weight. Well done. You have completed crazy step one, throw away the scales. Your certificate of achievement is ready to download. Damn. Uh.